Mainly for the anglers right now is it gives them that opportunity to, get to take fishing to another level. BASS is, it's the ultimate in fishing. I mean, you're going to have the best fishermen on that trail. The best fishermen coming up through the ranks will be, should be coming up through the Federation. The Federation program gives the weekend anglers a uh, opportunity to fish at the uh, Bassmaster Classic. It's the only road to it for the weekend angler. Doesn't have to do the pro trail. He, he works a regular job five days a week. I mean, they'll help you out and they'll tell you where to go. And uh, it's like we're all a big team. Bam! Today, the Bassmasters heads to Quincy, Illinois and the Mississippi River for the 1996 Wrangler BASS Federation National Championship. It all takes place along a 100-mile stretch of this mighty river where the legend of Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn was first spawned. But these 49 national and international qualifiers know that from here can come a true legend. The BASS Federation program the only way that amateur anglers can qualify for the prestigious Bassmasters Classic and have a shot at winning bass fishing's most coveted crown. Today, we're going to learn the ins and outs of the Federation program, how you can participate in local club tournaments, rise up through the ranks of the Federation qualifying tournaments, ultimately making it here to the Wrangler BASS National Championship and a shot at one of five slots in the Bassmasters Classic. But the Federation program is more than that. It's a way for up-and-coming anglers to prove their all-around fishing abilities on and off the water. Today, you'll see a local bass club in action, participate in a chapter meeting, visit a club tournament, and follow one young fisherman through the qualifying process on the road to the 1996 Bassmasters Classic on Lay Lake near Birmingham, Alabama. This show is tailor-made for you aspiring anglers at home, so get ready. Here's the best way to take your bass fishing to its next level. I'm Tim Miller. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will be right back. The Wrangler BASS National Federation Championship. Quincy, Illinois and the Mississippi River. 49 qualifiers from the ranks of the 50,000 member worldwide BASS Federation program. From here, five anglers will live a dream and compete in the 1996 Bassmasters Classic on Lay Lake near Birmingham, Alabama. To be sure, this is no ordinary bass tournament. To make it, you don't just plunk down an entry fee and show up. You have to earn it. And the dues are stiff. Only the cream rises to the top here. Stub your toe just once along the way, and you're out. But for those lucky few, it can be the gateway to fame and fortune. Up until two years ago, none of these anglers had ever won the Bassmasters Classic. But in 1994, in Greensboro, North Carolina, Brian Kershaw changed all that and showed the world that the Federation anglers could indeed keep up with the pro anglers when he became the world champion angler. Tragically, Brian Kershaw died in a plane crash just four months after capturing the Classic crown. The trophy in this national championship is dedicated to his memory. So what is the Bass Federation program? How do you make it all the way to the Classic? The BASS Federation program began in 1968 when the very first bass club, the Chattanooga Bass Club, affiliated with BASS. Since that time, we have grown from one federated club to over 2,500 clubs with 49,000 anglers all across the country and in many foreign nations. Over 2,500 local bass clubs from 46 states and four foreign countries are the backbone of the Federation program. Each state and Canada are assigned to a division, the Central, Northern, Southern, Eastern, and Western. Once you're a member of a BASS-affiliated club, you'll find that it's much more than just fishing tournaments. Our clubs are very active in conservation work, community service projects, and youth projects. In 1991, BASS started the most dynamic youth program that has ever hit the fishing industry, Bassmaster Casting Kids. That program is now presented by Zebco and Rubbermaid, and in the first four and a half years, we have reached almost a half a million children. 
This program teaches children how to flip, pitch, and cast and earn scholarships while they're learning valuable skills that they can use for their entire life. If an individual wants to uh, work the Federation program, uh, it draws attention to him. Uh, a lot of people ask me about sponsorship. A uh, sponsor can't pay for his light bills with a bag of fish. He's got to have people out there that know how to promote a program, that know how to sell product and keep his name out in front of people. And to be able to do that, you have to make yourself visible. And, and when you're on the water, you're visible to other anglers, but you're not that visible to the guys that are going out here and buying these products. You take these same tournament anglers, put them out here at a youth event or a conservation effort, a boat show, an in-house like they do here at U.S. Sports, you get a lot of attention. A lot of people come through that front door. And that's what the Federation does for the Federation Anglers, the weekend angler. It gives him that one step up that any other organization can't offer. But tournaments pave the road to the classic. Here's how the Federation system works. From each local bass club, anglers are selected to compete in annual state tournaments. From there, the top 12 finalists from each state go on to an annual divisional tournament. The top state angler from that competition makes the Wrangler BASS National Championship. Each foreign country sends its national champion, who is also assigned to a division. Make the top spot in your division here and you get an invitation to the Bassmasters Classic as a Wrangler angler and a chance to fish the Bassmaster Invitational Tournament Trail for a season. In the Dallas-Fort Worth area, the Autry's Marine DFW Fishing Team is a two-year-old club that's already turning out winners, like Craig Schuff, a 35-year-old receiving dock worker who recently qualified for the 1996 Wrangler Federation Championship. Another up-and-coming superstar from this club is Barton Green, who just became the Texas State Federation like? champion. I'd say my fishing has improved at least tenfold. Just the caliber of fishermen that you compete against. BASS, it's the ultimate in fishing. I mean, you're going to have the best fishermen on that trail. The best fishermen coming up through the ranks will be, should be coming up through the Federation. In my opinion, the only way you're going to improve you got to keep stepping up the competition. And I felt like the Federation was the next step to really get up there with some guys that could put you to the test. Roy Roach is this year's club president. What I mainly expected from it was competition. And as you can see in this particular club, we got the competition. And uh, that's what I was looking for. Got more than bargain for. Way more than I bargained for. The DFW fishing team is signing up for a tournament this coming weekend at Lake Granberry, a Brazos River impoundment about an hour west of Fort Worth. The points these anglers earn Sunday will count toward their ability to go to next year's state championship, the first leg on the road to the 1998 Wrangler National Finals. Things get going early anytime the Bassmasters Classic is involved. And these 30 members of the DFW fishing team know that one of them may eventually make it through the maze to classic stardom. But here on the local level, it's working together, sharing information, helping the other guy, and having fun as a club that makes the Federation program so successful. After a quick boat launch, fishing partners are out on the water, just like the big boys do it on the Bassmaster Tournament Trail. Fort Worth's Craig Schuff is a promising young angler who holds down a regular 40-hour-a-week job. But Schuff can also catch bass, as evidenced here in this late spawn condition on Lake Granberry. I don't know, yeah. Big fish. One I need right here. Get it. For anglers competing in this Damn. random draw format, Damn. it's a chance to see oh. new techniques, learn new tips, and get better at bass fishing. Oh, I love it. Everyone around is, in the club is very nice. They, like Craig was saying, they tell you where they're uh, catching fish and what they're catching it on. And uh, if you're at the club meet on Thursday night and you're going to a lake on Saturday, and I mean, they'll help you out and they'll tell you where to go. And uh, it's like we're all a big team. Figuring out a bass catching pattern here is just as critical as in the big leagues, except you only have one day to do it. Craig Shuff is casting two late spawners up shallow and the bass that have moved back out to obvious cover, like here. 
Good fish. Let it? Yeah. No, never mind. Yeah, go ahead. That's the keep for sure, and he wouldn't hit it. There's one, finally. At the club's weigh-in, it's time to find out what the bass were really doing. If all these guys just went out today and went fishing by themselves and they weren't in the club tournament and had a tough day like they did, they might have thought, well, you know, I just completely messed up. Kind of like what I was thinking before the weigh-in. Yeah. And then you come to weigh-in and you see how really tough it is and all these guys are good fishermen. Uh, that You learn from that that, you know, it was tough. And... Uh, just got to stick it, with it. It wasn't just... It wasn't that I was having such a sorry day. The conditions were really tough, and I can spe expect this again next year under the same condition. By the way, Craig's fish and buddy, Kirk Bottoms, worked a post-spawn pattern today to grind out four bass, eight pounds, three ounces, to capture the $400 top prize. With his two fish weighing eight pounds, two ounces, Craig Shuck was second. When we come back, we'll follow Craig to Quincy, Illinois for the start of the 1996 Wrangler BASS National Championship. The Federation trail to the Bassmasters Classic continues in a moment. Countdown time. In three days after 24 hours of fishing competition, we'll find out who the five divisional finalists are, the ones who'll make it to the 1996 Bassmasters Classic in Birmingham. Without a doubt, Fishing here on the Mississippi has been a grind. When word leaks out that a bass has been caught, there's gonna be a swarm. No group of active feeding fish will be safe around here. The strategy these 49 contestants face is whether to stay up in the Quincy area in Pool 22 or navigate two of the Mississippi's locks and dams and make long runs to region south. Generally, fishing is reported to be better some 70 miles downriver. But the locks are made for barges, not bass boats. And shipping takes priority over fishing. Get stuck waiting for a barge, and you could lose your entire day's catch from being late. At the first day weigh-in, Thomas Vickers of North Carolina figured out how to catch one keeper bass. I was consistent and persistent. I made about a thousand casts to one log. <laughs> Stayed in one spot. That's the only place I've gotten a keeper bite here in about you know what, three or four days. Bill Corbin of Connecticut weighs in two bass and five pounds to lead the Eastern Division. But Fort Worth's Craig Shuff is on a roll with three keepers from Pool 24. And folks, he just blew the lead right through the top of the tent. Seven pounds, four ounces. That's market, folks. Bob Cobb, there you are. The question is, with so many Mississippi River variables, can Craig Shuff hang on to his two-pound, four-ounce lead over Bill Corbin? Keep in mind that there are actually five individual tournaments going on at once here as contestants in each division slug it out for those coveted slots in the Bassmasters Classic. And we have a tight race in the Central Division as tournament leader Craig Shuff has almost a two-and-a-half-pound advantage over Luke Payne and Jim Smith. But for Shuff, disaster. Two barges in the first lock and two more in the second keep him from making it to pool 24 and his Marina Harbor fishing spot. He settles for the middle pool, 23, where he's never fished before. But Jim Smith was in an earlier flight and managed to squeak through. Uh, I just chose to gamble and come down here and hopefully if I get a bite it's going to be a good one. These fish uh, seem to be in the mouths of these creeks or closer towards the front like this. Water temperature's been running about 57 degrees, so it's still pretty cool. I feel like these fish are still in their uh, wintering areas, and whenever they move up out of a little bit deeper water, uh, you'll catch one. But the gamble doesn't pay today. Smith blanks. In the Eastern Division standings, there's a tight race developing between Bill Corbin, who has a 12-ounce lead over James Dudley and Fred St. Louis. Corbin's two-bass catch came early yesterday as he was concentrating on wood cover just off the bank. Here's his pattern. I'm pitching a black black lizard with a chartreuse tail to the wood, I'm trying to concentrate on not only the laydowns, but there's a lot of wood under the water that you can't see. You got three to five feet of water. But what I'm looking for is where I've got two to three feet of water up against the bank, as opposed to being, you, you know, 20 feet, 10, 20 feet from the bank. 
The Bass Federation program is designed to help you, the local angler, become a better bass fisherman. But far beyond that, the greatest reward of the Federation program is the friendship that develops between fishermen who have the same common goal. Take Bill Corbin, for example. He's from Southbury, Connecticut. Through his local Federation club, he competed against, became best friends with a guy by the name of Brian Kershaw. I know Brian was with me yesterday. I just happened to be telling my non-boating partner uh, a little story about Brian and I fishing a tournament. And right then is when I caught that fish that was almost four pounds. It's been kind of hard being here at the Wrangler with, with him in the back of my mind. Working together, it was, uh, it just was almost as if I, uh, I was there with him. He won for all of us Federation anglers. Sometimes it's hard to concentrate here knowing I just, you just miss him so much. Thanks, Bill. We all miss him too. At the day two weigh-in, Biff Humphreys of Centenary Zimbabwe has bass. Ray Scott and the Bass Angler Sportsman Society sent 1,000 largemouth fingerlings to Zimbabwe in 1976. Now it looks like payoff time. He needs seven pounds, five ounces to take the lead. He got it, people, eight pounds. He's taking the lead in the Central Division. Hey, Zimbabwe. Humphrey. This second day, the Central Division race is the focus of the leaderboard. Biff Humphreys commands the lead over Craig Shuff, who zeroed today. One ounce back is Luke Payne. Kenny French is leading the Northern Division. Bill Corbin tops the East. Thomas Vickers, the Southern, and John Simpkin in 10th heads the West. This is the Indian Grave. It's a backwater lake about 10 miles north of Quincy, just off the Mississippi River. And it's the area where our leader, Biff Humphreys, put together his eight pound string yesterday. Let's find out what he's doing. Pitching up, up to the the base of these uh, big trees in the water here. You know, all the roots are sticking up and there's little places in there where the bass can, can pull up to, I think. I think also they're just starting to stay, but there's only one or two of them that are moving in. That's why it's so slow. And uh, once I pitch the lizard, I'm not really uh, pulling it back as you would conventionally. I'm just tapping, flicking the rod so that you, uh, you get that rattle. Just up the slough from Biff Humphreys, Naoki Kosa of Tushi, Japan, has hooked a good one. Kosa was last year's National Federation champion in Japan, earning him a slot in this tournament. This bass will move him way up the leaderboard. Well, fishing here with tournament leader Biff Humphreys has been slow. As you can see, he just has one fish, about a pound and a half. But meanwhile, our leader from the first day, Craig Shuff, has made it through both locks 70 miles down the Mississippi River, and he's in the marina of Pool 24. Let's check in with him. This area that I'm fishing is a flat. It's about two foot, and it drops off to six to eight foot. And where I got the strike is when it came over the two foot lip, I just kind of let it go down in an arc, and that's when I get bit. It's a half ounce, single spin, with about number five or six Colorado blade, gold. Steady, slow retrieve. As long as I can feel the bait thumping, I know I'm not reeling too slow. Add two more keeper bass in the last 10 minutes, and Craig Shuff has done it. He's got it. There we go, right there. He's got it. I don't know. He's over seven pounds. Seven, mark it, 11. There you go. Wow. There's your winner. One last time. Right now, it's time for the Pro's Pointer, the how-to section of the Bassmasters. Brought to you by Wrangler Rugged Wear, geared for the outdoors. Occasionally, when I'm throwing a spinnerbait, uh, I like to pitch it underhanded for two reasons. It uh, enters the water a lot softer, and uh, if I'm trying to put it up under a log or branches or something like that, if you go underhanded, you can get it under there. It's pretty simple. You just you don't have to hold it in your hand, but you can. Just put it, lay it down in the water instead of letting it hit. Just pull your rod up as it's fixing to enter. If you'll practice this, especially when the fish are tight to cover and hard to catch, 
I think it'll help you catch more fish. The five Wrangler anglers who've made it to the 1996 Bassmasters Classic in Birmingham, Alabama. From the Central Division, Craig Schuff captures the Brian Kershaw Memorial Trophy. Kenny French represents the Northern. Bill Corbin follows in Brian Kershaw's classic footsteps from the Eastern. Thomas Vickers represents the Southern. And in his second national championship, Donnie Cox qualifies from the Western Division. Next week, follow our Bassmasters cameras to Central Texas and Richland Chambers Reservoir for the qualifying rounds of the 1996 Megabucks Tournament. It's a show full of pre-spawn tips from the pros. We'll see you here next week on TNN Outdoors. The Bassmasters has been brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Bassmasters Classic, Pro Edition, bringing world-class bass fishing indoors. Pennzoil, the motor oil that works like a liquid bowl.